Hello, everybody. This is Justin O'Krahur here from Scatterwork. And we're talking in this short webinar about uncovering or finding your stakeholders and then engaging them. Just to remind you, Scatterwork helps people become successful project managers. And we do that by a variety of consulting and training actions. And we have plenty of well-known clients and we work in a range of different sectors. And uh, myself, I've been involved in this for quite a long time and I've worked in lots of different countries and that's the experience that we bring to you. Uh, here's the entire team. So we're a compact team and we work virtually unless we actually need to meet on site somewhere. Um, but between us, we have um, three engineers, we have three people holding doctorates, we speak a number of different languages and uh, can help you with your projects. So here we go. So we're starting. So we just remind ourselves that a project um, delivers something. I will say to, it's a bit like sending somebody shopping. When they come back, you say, well, what did you get? And they, they got this and they got that. And they can put it on the table. So uh, one output that you can have a project is that you get a thing or an item or you get something that you can put there and you can say, that's it. I've just, um, you know, I've built... I don't know, I've built a house or I've built a model or I've made some decorations for Christmas or whatever it might be, something, but something physical. And a second thing that you might get out of a project is a service. So, for example, an insurance company might decide that they're going to offer a new type of insurance for holidaymakers um, who are staying inside Europe um, and they're of a certain age group and uh, they travel in pairs or something like that. And then they say, hmm, well, that sounds as though we can offer that. And then the question is, how do they sell it? How do they define it? Um, all the rules about calculating the cost and everything and um, all of that, and then training people and so on. And by the time of all that is ready, then uh, they can um, uh, send that out and uh, use it as a service. So the project is putting it in place. And once it's in place, you hand it over to production people and say, now you can sell that service. So a project can deliver a service. And the third thing it can deliver is um, a change of state. So for example, we want to get a quality uh, accreditation for our company. And the, uh, the, the, the company will, um, uh, apply and uh, then uh, we do all the work and we get the examination and then they send in the report and then they say yeah you've got it and then you get a particular you know a certificate or something which says you've got it so the difference between for and after is that you've got a state you've changed the state from it not being recognized that you would you didn't have the quality to something that you did and maybe I could ask you to to type in the name um, into your chat of, of a project that you've seen, any project that you've been involved in. Just to give us some idea of, of uh, maybe uh, something that, that is a project, something that begins and ends and it gives you something specific. That's the key issue is that you have something. And then of course, if it's similar to what you've done before, um, then you don't have as much to prepare. But if there's a lot of preparation to be done because it's very different, at that stage, there'd be more preparation and thoughts and so on. So um, if, you, if you have any uh, project there that you care to share with us, just, just type it into the chat. Uh, yeah, you should be able to, the chat is working. Okay, so um, let's move on from there. I've got here some examples that we've had from previous events. Um, upgrade data quality in a database. So that's, that's one where the end, the difference between the end and the beginning is the state. You've got all this data and, you know, you know, there are errors in it and there are gaps and, you know, let's just say it's a list of people and you're not quite sure if the birthdays are correct or something like that. And by the time you've finished, you can say, ah, that data is now a better quality. So that's a change of state. Mm -hmm. Or let's look at ensure compliance with GDPR. You know, 10 years ago, that didn't exist. It came in there a couple of years ago. And 
uh, the company needs to set up and work out how are we going to actually do it. We have to set up processes, records of where the information is, um, and you know, processes, what we do if, for example, uh, there's a data leak and all that sort of thing. So in a way, it's a sort of service. And we put all that together and train people. And once it's up and running, we say, well, now it's running. It, it belongs to, to production. Hmm? But setting it up was the project. Um, another one that came up was upgrade cyber security. So uh, that's been quite a big issue in, in recent years. Uh, far more attacks than they used to be. And uh, some of them are very dangerous. And um, we need to work out what, what standard do we need to achieve? Um, who's going to lead it? How long is it going to take? All that sort of thing. And when, when we agree what the goals are and then it's carried out and delivered, then the, uh, the, the survey, the, 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 the cybersecurity has been improved according to the spec. So all of those are projects. So what we're talking about this afternoon is about finding or uncovering and engaging your stakeholders. And the reason, if we think about it, is this. By definition, the stakeholders are the people who interact with the project. So they're very closely associated with it. And we've already said here that the project delivers um, a, a, the project delivers a unique product of some sort or a service or a result. Hmm? And whether it's accepted depends on the stakeholders. So we might think we have a wonderful project. And at the end, they say, no, no, I'm not happy. It didn't meet this requirement or it didn't meet that. So we need to know who our stakeholders are. Um, so that we know who to go back to and say, well, we've done it now. And hopefully they say that was very good and that adds to your reputation. And if it does, then that's easier for the next time. Um, but you can't have a, a project without a stakeholder. You can't sort of just do it and leave it there. You've got to have stakeholders. And it's their opinion that says whether or not the project was successful. And they may have misunderstandings and still say, oh, no, no, that was a bad project. No, it didn't really go very well. No, she didn't know what she was doing and, and so on. Um, so it's their opinion. And also, of course, stakeholders are people that know what the risks are likely to buy to be in a project. So when we're trying to identify risks as part of our risk management, knowing who the stakeholders are um, is, is very um uh, it's very important um, so that um, the, uh, we, we get a seed, an input of risk. Oh, yeah, these are the, these are the risks um, and they're coming up. And then, of course, they're more likely to agree that we manage them properly if they suggested them themselves. So there are a lot of reasons for knowing who our stakeholders are. And another one is that uh, it, I've already hinted at this one, that the, uh, the stakeholders, when they're satisfied, then everyone says our project was good. Mm? And in the old days, people used to say a project is successful if it delivers on time and within budget and so on. But in the current state of things, anything for it can change from day to, to today to tomorrow. Um, for example, where I live, they closed the railway for two weeks recently because they wanted to renew the track. Now, it could have happened there was a really bad storm or there was a, um, a, a building site accident or something like that. And maybe it would have been closed for three weeks instead of two. Now, you, you can't say, oh, yeah, that was the project manager was late. Huh? It, it could be that, that the project manager did everything to be safe. And because of that, it was late. So we have to keep the stakeholders satisfied by interacting with them. And if we're going to be late or over budget, we have to interact. So they say, well, OK, I understand and keep them happy. <laughs> so that's why we do it that way. Um, so project stakeholders, uh, they're, they're really part of the deal. And a lot of the books they bring, you know, stakeholders are in chapter three or five or something. But I think these days that uh, stakeholders is really where you start on a project. Okay, so um, what are the main categories of stakeholder? Um, here we are, we've got, uh, I've got a few suggestions here. 
Um, I've got uh, our clients, uh, they're, they're going to be some sort of, um, there's definitely stakeholders, they want to get whatever it is we're dealing with. Um, we've got um, the sponsors. Uh, these are the people within the organization that have the authority and they have the, the resources to make the thing go. We have various outside authorities, for example, to do with safety um, or um, environmental protection or something like that. There might be neighbors who might or might not be in or outside the company. They might be, uh, they might be against us. They, maybe they don't like the noise that we're going to have or something like that, but they're still stakeholders, management, team members, and so on. So stakeholders includes everyone who even thinks that they're affected by the project. That's the way that it works. And it can be, it's not just the people inside the company who are senior managers. Uh, it, it goes far further than that. And uh, some of the people, they might pop out at us quite unexpectedly um, and uh, affect our project. So what do we do? Okay, well, we identify our stakeholders as early as we can as early as possible, find out who they are and who, who is likely to interact with the project. And then we work out how to interact with them. Huh? And with a bit of luck, we will identify the, the, the main groups. But if we're unlucky, there might be some stakeholders there that we didn't think about. So let's go into a bit of a discussion here uh, about who your stakeholders are. And what I've got is a scenario here. I crossed myself, I've told, closed down the camera here, just so that you can see the text. And we're going, I'm going to go through this text here. It's, a, it's a, a scenario. And then we're going to go through some questions together about um, stakeholders that would arise in this situation. So it's February and your consulting engineering company has a contract to manage the building of a shopping center in a town of 50,000 inhabitants. They're going to demolish an old covered market and shops, and the entire area will be used for an underground car park. So just take away everything that was there before. And the new building will include a new hotel, fitness services, and it will be energy neutral. So, and it must be open for 30th of November next year, uh, because that's coming up to um, a Christmas period, uh, December, early January, and so on. And um, that's the time when there's a lot of seasonal shopping and tourist demand. So it's, a, it's very important that we'll get that finished um, by that time. So I'm going to go through some questions now. Um, and we'll have some sort of discussion, a sort of monologue, if you like, or I'll interact with the, the chat that you put up. So the first one is, who are all the stakeholders? Who do you think they are? Well, I guess the, um, the owners of this place, uh, it might be an investment company, or it might be a company that there's just one very rich person behind it. Uh, somebody like that. And uh, they would be, they'd be saying, well, I want my new shopping center, you know, and here's the thing that I want done and that's when I need it done. But who else are the stakeholders? What about um, the local authority? Maybe the local authority is saying, oh yes, this will increase the business in town. And they're very keen because it will improve the image of the town. And then uh, environmental safety. Um, there will be an authority there again from the state probably and they would be concerned um, that the way that it's built uh, will, will be safe for example if there's a fire all those sort of things so these people fire offices they would be stakeholders as well and then um, when you're doing the building there are going to be lots of traffic on the road and it's going to come up past a, a couple of roads and the people who live or the, the shops on that road are going to be concerned about the amount of traffic. So they're stakeholders as well. And let's think, are there, any, are there any other stakeholders? The, the company that does the work is a stakeholder. They want the job to work properly and they want to get a good reputation and um, finish the job and make their money and move on to the next one. 
So there are lots of stakeholders there. Are they individuals or organizations? Does that matter? Um, my experience is that in any organization, you have people. So we would say that, for example, the, the fire officer in the town is a stakeholder. Um, the, the fire office is, and legally they, you're dealing with the fire office. But the person who's going to make the decision is going to be the head of the fire office. And if they have some concern, we're dealing with a person. And they might think, oh, yeah, these people, they're, they're not under control at all. I, I'll have to be really difficult with them. Um, or they might be very you know, friendly, or they might be professional or less professional or focused or not focused and so on. And uh, so knowing the individual within the organization makes it a lot easier um, to run your project. So um, some of these things, yeah, for example, I mentioned the investment company. That could be an investment company, but maybe it belongs to just sort of one rich person. How much do they support the rebuilding program? So it could be that some of the stakeholders are, are not very positive about this. For example, the planning people in the town, the, the, the people who have the authority to um, agree that you're allowed to build a building. And they might think, yeah, you know, this building, it's too big. It's going to generate too much traffic or it's too high. It's out of proportion with the other buildings. Um, and they might be a bit against you, as it were. And if you don't know that, well, then how are you going to get your, your work through? Hmm? How are you going to keep them in a positive frame of mind? So that's, that's often an issue because on any project, you, you prepare to do it, uh, you start up and um, then um, uh, that you're going to do the deliverables. But before you get as far as the deliverables, uh, the, uh, the people who are waiting for it, they're going to uh, say, well, you know, where is it? Where is it? I don't see it coming. And if they don't trust you, you can get into a situation where they start asking extra questions and they want more meetings and they're not very happy and they want more reports and you do that and it takes your time out of the project. And then you find that you're getting behind because you're diverting time into doing the reporting instead of doing the project. Um, so how are we going to keep them in, a, in a, frame, a positive frame of mind? Have you any suggestions on that? Well, one of them um, might be to get them, it depends on what their, their status, you know, if they are, you know, management in your own company or authorities or just observers or neighbors or whatever. So you may need to deal with them in separate groups. But one of the ways would be to bring them in, um, show them the plans um, and uh, let them ask questions and so on. I was involved with a, a project in Indonesia and they were building a cement factory. And the same company had had a problem in the sense that they had opposition somewhere else they wanted to build one. And the local people got together and they said, no, no, we didn't want that. And they managed to get the development stopped. So when they were doing this next one that I've just mentioned, they took people from the district where they were building it and they flew them to where there was another cement plant and then they could get a look at it and a feel and some idea of what sort of noise and how much space it takes up and how much work it generates and you know all those sort of things and um, uh, they, they were doing that but the key thing is that if people um, can't see anything coming uh, they tend to worry, <laughs> so we need to communicate. What communications? Well, the traditional way of doing this is to say the people who have real power, you know, for example, you, you know, the, the, the regional manager that you're working with or something like that, people like that, you should deal with them on their own terms. So if they say, I want to meet once a week, you meet them once a week. If they want a summary at the end of every day, you give them a summary at the end of every day and so on. And of course, that person is, is very often the sponsor and the sponsor has a lot of authority in the company. And usually it makes sense to make quite sure that you're in, in good contact with them so that they can support you. 
So it's not it's not a little confrontation, but they're definitely um, somebody that needs a lot of um, attention. And then you've got other people who might have quite a lot of power, um, but they're not directly involved in the project. So, for example, you might have a head of a department in another department, not, not associated with the project. And they might think, oh, yeah, you know, if they do that, that's really my territory. I, or, you know, they might be using my people. I don't want them to do that or something like this. Um, and so it makes sense to keep them happy. And one of the ways of doing that is, is to meet them maybe as a group, maybe as individuals and say, um, you know, I, I know you, you know, you're, you're a senior person in the company and, and um, you know, I'd really like your opinion. Maybe you have some suggestions of risks and so on. And I thought I'd show it to you um, uh, just so that, uh, you know, you have some idea of what we're up to. Then you get the group um, that don't have any power, but are very concerned um, so, for example, if you're building your new factory, maybe the people who live across the road are worried about the amount of traffic or the noise or something like that. So they usually feel that sort of group feels that they have no power or very little power, uh, but they have definitely have a big interest. Yeah? So um, groups like that, one a really good way of dealing with it is to invite them um, uh, privately and say, well, you know, we, we realize that you're really affected by this. So that's why we're telling you all this. And maybe even tell them stuff before it's made public. Um, but to treat them as a, as a group that needs to be heard. And then the fourth classic group is the people that are uh, not very closely associated with the project. And the usual approach to that is to, to watch them just, just in case. You never know, somebody may come from that group and get a job and somehow be very closely in, involved in the project um, in, the, in the next phase, for example. So um, just keeping an eye on them as the saying goes. And then I would ask, are there any other considerations uh, for stakeholders? Uh, yeah, there could be, uh, I mentioned local authority, the people who are doing the work here. Yeah. The people who do the work, they're going to be interested because um, it's going to add to their career. And at the end, uh, they're going to um, want to go on to the next project. And they want to go with something from you which says they worked with you and they did a really good job. So um, that's another consideration for that. So as you can see, there are a lot of details that come out and we need to ask those questions. Otherwise, there's a good chance that we actually uh, don't connect with the stakeholders. Um, then when we come back with the deliverables, they're not very happy. Um, they're not able to support us because they're not in close touch with us. Um, they're not able to help us um, identify the risks. So that's a very uh, important uh, interaction we have with our stakeholders. So there's, there's several things that we need to do there. So thanks very much for all the inputs on that. So let's just move forward and remind ourselves, this is just a, a snippet. Um, if we had more time and more interaction and more people with more projects and so on, we could have a, maybe a deeper discussion than the one that we had today. And we've used quite a lot of resources from different places um, to prepare these slides. So thanks very much. And if anyone needs to, or wants to talk to me about any aspect of their own projects or project issues, um, that's the place to go to. So thanks very much for joining today. And um, I hope that that was useful. Thanks very much.